Last week, we started a brand new series called We Are the Church. And if you were here, um, the, you remember, if you weren't, I'm going to catch you up. The basic idea is that from last week is that we have a master who began a movement and has invited us in to that movement. And each week, we're going to go over a couple of things about the church that we need to know, about the fact that we are the church. We looked at a list of things the church is not and we talked about some uh, illustrations, some, some analogies from the New Testament that tell us what the church is. And this, this morning, we're going to start off talking about this idea of membership. What do you think of when you hear the word membership? Or think of a, the idea of being a member somewhere. We have some definitions I'm going to throw up on the screen. These are three definitions that would come if you were to look this up in your dictionary at home. The first one is a person, animal, or plant belonging to a particular group, right? A member of a group. Like, we might think of this as club membership. You know, you might be a member at a swimming club or a country club or a social club of some sort. We think about membership in that realm. That's where we imagine membership. This is probably the number one area where we think about membership existing in our culture. Another uh, possible definition is a constituent piece of a complex structure. In other words, there's a member that connects the front and rear axle, all right? That, that's a member that, that connects those two things. And then the third one is archaic. This is, it means it's basically outdated. It's not really in use in this, in this function in our modern way of speaking. And the third definition is a part or organ of the body, especially a limb. That's that's a third and the most archaic form of the word membership. Now, when you think about the New Testament, as we imagine the New Testament as it talks about members of God's church, members of Jesus' church, what it's talking about is not definition one or definition two. Definition two is obviously not it, but it's not even definition one, where you're a member of some kind of a group or a club or something along those lines. It's actually definition number three, which makes it much more confusing for us. So as we approach scripture and we read about membership in God's church, we immediately in our minds go to place of definition number one, where you're a member of some kind of a group. But what the New Testament authors were talking about, what Paul primarily was talking about, is actually membership like a member, like a limb is a part of the body, a member of the body. And the issue is we don't use it, so we almost have to double translate as we're reading scripture. We translate it from the from gr original Greek to English, and then it's even not up to date in our English translations for many of us. Maybe some of your Bibles actually, as you read in uh, passages like 1 Corinthians 12 or Romans 12, might actually say parts of the body instead of members, right? It might actually say parts of, because it's trying to translate it into a more understandable version of English, but most of the time, the translators went with member, and that doesn't really communicate to us the same way that it may have uh, many, many years ago. It's archaic in our common English language today. And really, though, there's no other understanding of biblical church membership than to think of it as a member of the body. In fact, some churches don't even call it membership anymore because it gives the wrong idea. I've heard of churches calling um, church membership partnership because you're partnering in the mission. And I think that's great. There's something, though, to be said that the, the scriptures do say the word member. It's just that we have to understand it in the right way. Here's what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12. He says, just as a body... Though one has many parts, but all its parts form one body, so it is with Christ. So here it is. It's telling us there are many parts, but there's one body. And we're, it's the same way in the body of Christ. Just as we can look, we can say, okay, our body, I have a left arm, I have a right arm, I have eyes, I have nose, ears, I have all these different body parts, and it comes together and it forms one body. That's how it's supposed to be within the body of Christ, within Christ's church. Skipping down to verse 17, he says, If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? Can you imagine also, just on a pragmatic sense, if the whole body were an ear, how large of a Q-tip you would need in order, to, in order to be clean? Like, that'd be insane. Um, if the whole body were an eye, you'd have to roll places, and that would be uncomfortable, right? Like, we have different body parts for a reason. But in fact, God has placed the parts of the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. Man, we, we, we work together. Our bodies physically work together in a complementary way to function. And so the reality is, without the body, without one another, 
we're just like a, we're just like a pass by a U of M quarterback. We're incomplete. Okay, sorry. It's fall. I've got to start with that now. I've got to start early, get my jabs in. All right, bear with me. It's going to be a fun fall. Uh, we're both better than we thought, right? It's, it's a good thing. We're incomplete without one another. And just think about Michigan's quarterback whenever you think about where, how we would be separate from one another. We're incomplete without one another. Uh, yesterday, my daughter had to learn a hard lesson of life. She was uh, working on something on the floor as a puzzle, you know, and she put all the pieces together and she got down. She was almost done. And what happened? She was one piece short. You ever experienced that? Now, for her, it was like a puzzle that took her like 10 minutes. But there pe- there's been times where in our house, my, my wife Mackenzie, she loves puzzles. We don't do them very often. But w- the last time we did one together, that's exactly what happened. We had this huge puzzle took days or actually weeks to, to put together when it was all said and done. And you get to the very end and you're like, where's the piece? Like you're looking around on the ground and you're in the box. You're like, I checked the box like seven times, you know, thinking maybe it magically appeared between the last time I looked in there. And you end up with this puzzle piece short. And it's just, it's just not, it's not right. It's not how it's supposed to be. We're missing something. And you're short of the vision of what you were hoping for and what you really need for it to have its full effect. And in the same way, when we are without one another, when the eye is saying to the hand, I don't need you, or uh, the hand is saying to the eye, I don't need you, like we, we, are, we are just off in how we're supposed to be functioning. And, and oftentimes when it comes to the local expression of the church, we, there's a universal church that's all of God's people throughout the world who, have said, who have, believe in Jesus and who are part of his family. Then there's the local expressions of that, and we come together to form a body at the local level. And sometimes we're just missing pieces, we're missing parts, we're missing members of the body as we were designed to be. We're incomplete when we face those types of situations. We're like a puzzle missing pieces. We're like something that can't quite function the right way um, as we try to live out the call of Jesus on our lives and on our church. We're incomplete. We, uh, we, need, to be, we need to be full. We need, we need one another. Here's what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 12, 7 to back up in that same passage a little bit further. He says, now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given. Why? For the common good. A lot of times we think that we have our gifts and our talents and our makeup for us. It's what makes us successful in life, or it's what gives us the ability to, uh, to you know, to have our jobs and to uh, function in society and, and things of that nature. And that's true to a, to a degree, but the things that the Spirit gives us, those spiritual gifts, whether it's leadership or hospitality or wisdom or, or the discerning Spirit, like whatever it might be that the Spirit gifts you with, He gives it to you, not for you, not for you to be able to exercise and enjoy that gift, but for for the common good, for the body of Christ and the world, in fact, to even be able to experience and benefit from that gift that's been given to you. That's why we're given our gifts, not for ourselves, but for one another. We are gifted in order to serve one another here at this church. We are in, in whatever church person might belong to in the local expression, we are part of the family of God. And as we function in that role, we're given those gifts to serve one another. But oftentimes we can be selfish with them. We, we use them for ourselves or maybe for our family, but we don't use them for the family of God. We're gifted in order to serve one another. In Ephesians chapter 4, Paul says this, So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for the works of service. In our minds, this is where we talked about last week, we, we talked about one of the misconceptions about church that just seeps in. It's probably not a conscious thought, but it seeps in. We start to think about church as a service provider, right? There's a church that has a staff, and the staff is expected to pull things off, and then the church body gets to enjoy those things and participate and watch those things um, and, and, and be a part of it from a sort of a spectator perspective. But we, we think of it as a service provider sometimes, uh, the church, but it's not. It's, it's supposed to be actually really the leadership of a church is really just equipping the, the body of Christ to go out and do the work of God in the world. That's what it comes down to. So it means that we all ought to be engaged in that mission and what we're called to do as we follow after Jesus, as his call, his mission, his, his movement, like we talked about last week in the world. We're called to be a part of that church. We're called to be members in that body. And speaking of members, over this past year, we actually went through our very first membership cycle. And we have a few different uh, classes, so to speak, that we, that we run that help people elevate through that, uh, through that cycle. And the first one starts with Discover, which is really, it's not so much a membership class as it is just discovering about who we are as Oak Point. And then from there, you move to Connect. How do I connect here 
at this church and then join. That's making a membership official. What I want to do real quick right now is I'm going to invite those incoming brand new first ever class of members. Now some people get grandfathered because we started with Oak Point Novi and if they if you went through those classes you are a member here. Uh, but I want to invite up those brand new members who went through our join class recently. So come on up. All right, we're going to invite you all up. You're going to come up here, and we're just going to uh, introduce you to the congregation right now as we're talking about membership because it really fits what we're speaking about today and, uh, and let you know how that, what this process looks like. So here are our members, our newest members for Oak Point Can. Let's give them a round of applause as they walk up here. Awesome. Fill in, fill in. All right, this is Kim David. She's, uh, she's our, one of our members from this newest class that came through. This is John and Julie Wakefield. John and Jen Lee. You uh, don't have to be named John to join our church, but it's encouraged. <laughs> this is Alicia and Daisy as well who are joining our church. We are missing one uh, couple from that class who have completed the process um, and, and that's Gary and young me. You'll see Gary next week. Just look at one of the cameras. He'll be running the camera next week. Um, and, and young me will probably be greeting up front. So you see them as very active in our church as well. And so two, four, six, seven, eight, nine. We have nine people joining uh, our church right now through this membership class. And I just want to stand them up and celebrate them in front of this church because of the commitment that they've made to us. So give them another round of applause. Let's thank them. I'm just going to pray over this group of members, incoming members, real quick as we celebrate what God's doing here. Lord Jesus, we thank you for just, uh, God, just speaking to this group of people, saying, um, that just in convicting them, Lord, to, to want to commit to this body of Christ, this expression of your body here in, uh, in Canton. And God, we're so thankful for what you're doing. We're thankful that you're drawing people to yourself. We're thankful that you have been faithful to us in a very difficult year to start a church. God, we're thankful that that there are people in this church who are willing to do what it takes to, to be the hands and feet of you, Jesus. And so we're, we're just grateful this morning. We celebrate the commitment that these individuals have made to join this body as official members. And we thank you, Jesus. We pray all this in your name. Amen. Give them another one more because this is worthy of it. Thank you. You guys can grab a seat. Actually, just stay here for the rest of the message. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. So, why become an official member at, at, a, at a local expression of the body of Christ? I, I think it's really, it's just about the commitment. It's about saying, I'm in it, I'm a part of this, I'm not going to be here as a consumer, I'm going to be a part of what it takes to pull this off, and you're making a statement. You're making a statement of commitment at a place, and obviously we're not trying to rush anybody through membership. That's not the, the goal or the vision at all. I just wanted to stand these, these folks up to, to show you some people who are making that, that commitment who are saying, um, I'm in it to add to the community. I'm in, I'm in it to be a part of what it takes to pull off uh, being a, a functioning body of Christ here, an expression of the body of Christ here at Oak Point Canton. And so really it, it, what, it, what it comes down to is if you've been here for a long time, you can probably skip out of Discover if you know the way that Oak Point works, but I do encourage it. I think it's an informative class. You hear a little bit about, about our story going back to Oak Point Novi and then extending through to present day with our four locations of Oak Point and uh, the way that we work as a, a, as a family of churches, not like uh, as, ch as church locations that are all cookie cutter, but as a family of churches that have some autonomy and have some resourcing and, and, and uh, like-minded accountability and things of that nature. And so you learn about all these different things, a little bit about the story of how we started and it's a great way to get to know us with Discover, and we have that coming up actually next week. And so if you're newer here, really encourage you to come to Discover, or if you're interested in pursuing membership, it could be good for you as well. So you take those, those three classes, and then we have a little coffee with the elder, and, uh, and we basically bring you in. If, um, you get baptized if you haven't been baptized as a believer, and it's just a great way of stamping it and saying, I'm going to be a part of what God's doing here with Oak Point Canton. It's taking on that responsibility of saying, I'm part of the people who are responsible for being the church, not just attending the church, but being the church, because that's what the bottom line is. We are all responsible to be the church, and I think, like we talked about last week, a lot of our sort of American mindset of, of being consumers, you know, in, in the marketplace can seep into church life. It really does. It really does. In so many ways that we don't realize, it seeps in, and we start to treat church 
like something that never was designed to be. I've got a little bag of props, all right? Uh, a, co- a few weeks ago, or a couple months ago, I guess, whatever, six weeks ago or something, um, we got the chance to go check out a Lions training camp practice. It was a pretty cool experience. Uh, saw the players out there on the field, um, and there were some freebies for the kids. And here's one of the things we got on the way in, that our kids just grabbed a whole stack of. This one actually got uh, autographed. This is, this is a, a Lions helmet, right? Can't you tell? You put this on, all right? And, and now, what am I ready to do? I'm not ready to play football, right? That's for sure. But I am ready to go to the stadium and like cheer my heart out, right, for the Lions. Like I'm ready to go and to scream and to shout and to say, go Lions and all those things. I look pretty awesome, don't I? I see some smiling out there. Uh, like this, this, is, this is pretty sweet. Like, it, it, you know, you put this thing together. It just is like a sheet of paper. You fold it up you, it, it, and it turns into a helmet. But the thing about this helmet is it's not really... F- suited for actual participation in the game itself, right? You go as a person who's in the stands, as a fan, as a bystander, as an observer, as a consumer of what's going on on the field. And so it's a whole lot different from this right here. This is a helmet that you can go out and play on the field, right? Let's see if I can get this to work. It's going to mess up my hair. My beard will still look all right though, right? My wife's taking a poll, by the way. Should I keep it or, yeah, you know, would it, save it or shave it, right? <laughs> save it or shave it. She's taking a poll. Um, okay, so if I wear this, though, it's a whole lot different from this thing, right? Like, this is not going to protect you from anything. If somebody runs into you wearing one of these, you're in big trouble, hospital type of trouble. Uh, this one will protect you to a degree, right? We are, we're learning more that it's not as protective as we want it to be, so we're working on that. But this is protective. This is something you can go out and you can participate. You can be in the game. Now, here's the thing. Oh, man. Mirror. Good? We good? Thanks, Jeremiah. This is the thing. Because of our American mindset, when we think about church life, we, we reach for this a lot of times. It's just the nature of things. We reach for this. We're going to go, and we're going to be bystanders. We're going to see what's going on at church. I'm not trying to guilt you. I'm not trying to, uh, you know, call you out or anything like that. This church has been so generous with your time and your giving and everything else. I'm not trying to say that at all. I'm just saying this is a trend in the American church. We pick this because we go and we, we're observers. And you know what? Part of it's the, ch- the church structure, too. I'll, I'll just say that, too. It's not, it's, not just, it's not just in the people. It seeps into the church structure as well. And, and the staff can, and I'm, I have this tendency sometimes, protect the things that are, this is what we do, you know? And, um, and so we want to be a church so that opens up and we say, you know what? We have all been gifted, what? For the common good. So that we all, we all contribute to the thing that God's doing in a local expression of his body, the church. And so we don't want to reach for this anymore. Like, we want that to be gone. It's not an option, right? You know, there's, there's a place for checking the churches out and seeing, seeing how it fits with, with the way God's created you and convicted you and things of that nature. But at the end of the day, when you choose a place, when you stand up in somewhere and you say, I'm going to be a member, this is my spot, I'm not going to leave over petty reasons, I'm going to, I'm going to contribute to making it better, this is going to be something that I'm committing to as a member of the body of Christ in that local expression, we got to grab this. we got to get into the game. we got to get out of the stands. we got to get stopped just observing and start being a part of what's happening out there. Now, I'm a huge football fan, and um, I got a chance to play in a, an alumni game for a school that I didn't actually go to, but they were, you were allowed to have a certain amount of other people in it. That was about like four or five years ago, and after that happened, and I survived it by the grace of God, I was like, never again. Never again. There were a bunch of dudes who like had year-long injury recoveries because of that game. I was like, yeah, we're not doing that again. But here's the deal. Church isn't as physical as actual football, right? But we all got to get into the game. We got to be a part of what's happening. Uh, That's what God calls us to be as members of the body. Not members of a club, not members of of observers, members of what's going on. Members of the, on the team. Contributing members of the team. That's what we are responsible for as, as Christ followers. We are called to be part of the church, to be a functioning part of the church. Here's what the church looked like, and I've read this to you not that long ago, uh, because I just think this is vital for us to look at a great example in Acts chapter 2, starting in verse 42. Luke tells us, they, they, the believers, devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, and to fellowship, and to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. 
They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day, they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. God was using this, and he was using the unity, he was using the, toge- the togetherness, he was using their, their gatherings, their love for one another, their mutual devotion, their membership, their participation in the church, one and all, to create something, a movement. We are called to connection. We are called to being members of one body. So it's not just that we're functioning the church of God in our world. That's what we're called to. We're called to connection. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 24 and 25, the author tells us, and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. I think there's one word that really speaks to us in that that passage for today. Um, This is a timely word for us. It's that word habit, (laughs) that word habit. Because I think over the last... 18 months or so, a lot, of, a lot of people have lost that habit of being together. Um, and again, I've said this before, I'm not, I'm not being critical of the ways that we had to manage an unknown pandemic. What I am saying is that there, there needs to be a level of commitment to one another towards being in the habit of, of gathering, of, of being together, of living off God's word and, and living in community as well, even if we have to be creative about what that looks like at points in time. And so we need to make sure that we are in the habit of being with one another as we are called to connection. Here's the bottom line. Here's a question I want you to ask yourself um, today. And there's different levels. This is going to apply to different people at different levels this morning. Uh, But the question is, how are you being the church today? How are you being the church today? There are some here who are committed Oak Point Canton folks who've been like, I've been here since the beginning, or I've been here for several months now, or whatever it may be, and this is my home church. And so for you, I want you to think about how, what are some next steps? You know, what ways are you plugged in? Are you plugged in uh, on the service level? Are you plugged in relationally, like in a life group where you can get uh, people walking alongside you and encouraging you, like, like the author of Hebrews is saying, encouraging one another toward love and good deeds? Are you contributing what's happening here? Are you engaged in, in ways that are building your faith and in building the church. And I also want you to consider if you're a committed member or a committed attender here at Oak Point Canton, to, to be, think about becoming an official member over the course of this next year, these next nine, ten months, to consider becoming a, an official member here at Oak Point Canton, just to stamp it and say that this is, this is a commitment that I'm willing to make. So that's the next steps for those who are committed. Maybe there are those who are attending, but you feel like, okay, I've kind of been the, one of those folks on the sidelines to this point because I've been watching, seeing what's, what's going on. Is this a place I want to say that is going to be my home church or is it not? I, wa- I want to encourage you to jump in and trade out your helmet. <laughs> just, just jump in and give it a try. Jump in, be hands-on. Go from being in the stands on the sidelines to being on the field with us. And there are several ways to be able to jump in. And we're Fortunately, this morning, doing a fall fair where we have plenty of places to plug in in terms of teams to serve on, but then also groups to become involved in. And those groups will help encourage you in your faith. Those are life groups and things of that nature. Then there are teams where you can volunteer anywhere from kids to greeting to coffees and do- coffee and donuts, set up and tear down, tech team, all, all across the board. I'm missing a bunch, okay? Like, I'm not trying to name them all and be exhausted. There's, there's a place where we could use you um, on one of our many teams here at Oak Point Canton. So jump in and, and get plugged in in one of those ways. We have, we have three venues that we talk about here, um, and you'd learn about this through the course of those, of those membership classes we talked about. The, the three venues are come to weekends, okay? That's, that's when we gather as a church, right? We gather as the church body. We don't go to church like we talked about last week. We gather as the church. We come together as the church. So come to weekends. The second one is to get in a group. It's another way of, of gathering as, as the church, but in smaller expressions of that. Um, and so there are opportunities to get in a group. I'd say the number one way, if you're not in a group right now, we've got something, we're going to start a series in two weeks from today uh, on the book of Jonah. So we're going to just call these groups Jonah groups. It's a great way to test drive a life group, essentially. So for eight weeks, these Jonah groups will meet. And at the end of the eight weeks, they are, they're going to 
be done meeting, unless that group decides to continue meeting, which might happen, uh, but you have an out. Like, you're signing up for eight weeks. You're not signing up for uh, an indefinite period of time, and those Jonah groups are a great way to check out a life group. You have, uh, you're not signing up for something that's, that's open-ended. You're signing up for eight weeks, and then you can see, maybe if it works out, it can be something that can become more regular uh, or long-term. So that's a great way to check that out and to get into a group. And then the last one is to join a team, and that's, that's what we're talking about with all those different places to volunteer and serve here at Oak Point. So that's for those who are maybe uh, have been attending for a minute, but you've, you've been sort of on the sidelines, not quite yet fully committed, but you might want to take that next step. And then the last, the last group are those who are new. Maybe you're checking things out, or you've been here for a month or so, and you're just sort of, you know, dipping your toe in the water here. That's awesome. We are so glad that you are here. And when you're ready, we want you to uh, to know we, we are going to help connect you. So let us know whenever it is that you get to that point in time. And for you, that first step, I would say, is just maybe come to that Discover class if you can. Come to that Discover experience. We're going to try to run those regularly every couple of months so that you have a chance, if you can't make next week, to be able to make one in the future. We provide lunch, and we just tell our story. How do we, how do we come to be? <laughs> our, our way back past, and, and me and Mackenzie's story as well, how God led us to this point in our lives as well. And so we'd love to have that opportunity to tell you a little bit more. How are you being the church today? And this morning, we have opportunities to find those ways to plug in, which Jackie is going to tell you about in just a couple of minutes. I'm going to pray for us as we think about uh, just the members and the method that God uses to build his church. Lord Jesus, we thank you as the master of your church that you have, uh, that you have a desire to use us Lord, as members of your church, and that the method is us being together. The method is us coming together for common purpose, for common goal, and just getting involved in that movement that you created. Lord, help us to be faithful to that call. Help us to follow you in everything, and Lord, we're just thankful that you choose to involve us in this, that you want us to get on the team. So Lord, we thank you for who you are. Jesus, we thank you uh, for the way that you're working here at Oak Point Canton. We pray that you continue to move. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, well, thank you all so much for being here. I'm Jackie, and as Mark elaborated on, we do have a lot going on outside. So um, if you are a team, a table lead, and you have a table that you're set up, I'm going to go ahead and ask you guys to leave and dismiss and go ahead and do a little any finishing touches that you have. Uh, well, the rest of us will be out there to join you in just a few minutes. And uh, more about this fall fair, you know, sometimes it's hard to know what's going on in a church or where do I fit in until you see it right in front of you and that's kind of what this fall fair is meant to be so we have tables set up out there you can just take your time walking through ask any questions there'll be cards you can sign up or circle any areas of interest and just kind of get a feel for what we have going on like Mark said there's involvement of all different kinds here at Oak Point Canton so we hope that you'll take that opportunity just 20 minutes or so however long it needs to be to just walk through there and do that in just a little bit Mark also mentioned discover Oak Point coming up that is next Sunday and it'll happen right after service, so 11.30 to 1, right here at the Village Theater. Lunch is provided, so if you can, just go to our website and sign up and let us know that you'll be coming. And that way we'll have an idea for how many uh, meals that we need to get for that. And then coming up in October, uh, the 22nd through the 24th, we have an awesome opportunity for the men of our church called Man Camp. Uh, Y'all are going to get to spend a weekend together. Uh, there's sure to be plenty of competition and games, but also a lot of time spent with the Lord and worshiping and all of that. And uh, we want to make sure that you know this isn't just a Novi thing. Um, this is something that all the campuses are involved in. Actually, Mike will be singing, Mark will be speaking. So um, definitely we're going to have a lot of Oak Point Canton presence there. The price for this event is now $200, and you can sign up online under our events tab. And then lastly, the Jonah groups, like Mark mentioned, kind of stepped on all my announcements today, but that's okay. Uh, we do have that out there as well. So y'all can sign up for the Jonah groups. It's really a great way if you've been thinking about getting involved in a life group, but not really sure if you're ready to take that plunge or commit um, to, you know, a long period of time. This is a really great way to do that because you can commit to eight weeks, see how it goes, and then see if you want to continue on after that. And it'll go along with our series that we'll be doing in the church as well. 
Um, if you're a visitor today and this is your first time, this is a big day <laughs> for you to come. So if you're like, I'm just new here, I'm not really sure where to go. Um, if you have any questions at all about anything, we do have someone at the welcome table in the lobby. So if you just want to stop by there and talk to somebody, we would love the chance to meet you. Um, we thank you all so much for coming and being with us today. I do want to say, since we are ending service a little bit earlier, the kids program, though, is still going on. Um, they are slated for the entire duration of service, so they are in there. Uh, programs, they are in their classes, they are still going on and learning in there, um, so they will be done at 11 o'clock. We really want to make sure that you have this time um, to just freely take your time, enjoy the fair, um, mingle, meet some people, and socialize, and that will do it for our announcements today. So thank you all so much for coming, and we will see you next week. Go ahead and enjoy the fair. Thank you.